Hey, what's going on, guys? Alex, C1N, Bless the Baby Show. That's what we're gonna call it this week. You saw the Halloween showcase. Everybody was having a great time. Look, man, I know you don't wanna hear me talking your head off and doing all that kind of stuff. Let's get straight to the highlights. The Ducks taking on Rare Breeds. Let's go. OG Ducks taking on Rare Breeds. 13 under division, a game everybody wants to see. Rare Breeds starting off with the ball. Oh, the ball is slapped out his hand. And that will be a touchdown, fumble recovery for a touchdown by the OG Ducks. They said they flew all the way across the country and they are here to play ball on the ensuing kickoff. Yes, he had a fumble, but this is one of the better players in the country. And here's why. He shows you how he gets up the field, accelerates, scores a touchdown. Of course, great blocking by his teammates, gets into the end zone and Rare Breeze would look to tie the game up. Now, Rare Breeze leading 7-6. Punt. OG Ducks. Rare Breeze. Makes a couple of people miss. Gets down the left sideline. And he would take it all the way inside the five-yard line, trying to help Rare Breeze get going late in the second quarter. Rare Breeze hands it off, gets into the end zone, and Rare Breeze now takes a commanding lead over the Ducks. Later in the third quarter, this quarterback, underrated player for the Rare Breeze, been good for them this entire time, finds his receiver, scores a touchdown, and Rare Breeze up 22-6. But I tell you what, this quarterback from OG Ducks was one of the best players on the field, love his delivery, gets a touchdown, and OG Ducks come chipping away, fighting away, getting back in the game. Less than a minute to go in the game. Ducks needing to play, fourth quarter. Gets the completion. Moves the chains. Quarterback again, goes back to pass. Reading the field, reading the defense, moves up in the pocket again. Finds his receiver. Another first down. Ducks trying to get in a position to tie the game up. Fourth quarter, 12 seconds left. Quarterback moves up again. Finds his running back. Clock is ticking, gets out of bounds. Less than five seconds to go. Can the quarterback make another play? He's having a great game. Moves up again. Finds his receiver, touchdown! As the Ducks tie it up 20 to 20 with no time left on the clock. So you know what that means, it's overtime and the Ducks again flying all this way across the country to come play Rare Breeze, the game with the two top teams in the country. Now Ducks in overtime, goes back to pass. Pass is a little bit high over the middle and usually what that means is that it's going to be an interception. And when Rare Breeze has the ball after the interception, they punch it in, score the touchdown, and that would be the play to win the game as the Rare Breeze win in overtime versus the Ducks in a very competitive game by both teams. And they say this young man is considered if not the best player, one of the best players in the country, an absolute fantastic player, gets around the left side, gets down inside the 20. And then here later on in the series, direct snap, gets into the end zone, and he scores a touchdown. ATL Elite would lead early 6-0. Later in the game, third quarter, again, going back to their workhorse. Steps inside, gets outside, just uses speed. Gets around the corner, gets down inside the one yard line. On the next play, ATL lead, punches it in, gets into the end zone and they would extend their lead with another touchdown as ATL lead would look to take control of the game versus NWO. And then late in the game, fourth quarter, less than a minute, go outside with the bubble. Receiver dives into the end zone, scores a touchdown, then go ahead and hits him with the flex as ATL Elite would win the game against NWI. So Icy taking on no limit. And this would be a great game, one of the better games of the day. They give it to the running back. So Icy goes out to the left side, and it's just something about when the helmet, they got the guardian cap on, seems bigger than the whole body. I just said something good about you, football. Good touchdown run by him. Hey, that's a little Cam Newton celebration right there, Superman celebration. All right, so Icy rolling out to the right side. Receiver goes up, climbs the ladder, scores a touchdown, and so Icy would lead pretty big early in this game. No limit, though. 
playing some good football. Said they didn't drive all the way down to Charlotte for nothing. As the quarterback gets into the end zone and they will cut into the lead. Late in the game, fourth quarter, 11 seconds left. No limit, trying to score. Quarterback doesn't see anybody. Pump fakes, gets around the left side. Season opening, but so icy closes so fast. They get the stop and so icy would end up beating no limit in a great game. Considered the best team in the country, ATL Elite Voodoo taking on Ferrari. And look at the blocking downfield as the running back takes advantage of it, gets around the left side, gets into the end zone, and Voodoo would take an early lead. Okay, spin the ball. Yeah, yeah, look at the dance. All right, cool. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. Nice little end zone celebration. Ferrari quarterback goes back to pass the ball, slides up in the pocket. And what a great find as he would find the man over the middle, and they will pick up the first down. Then later in the drive, Ferrari quarterback, who had an outstanding game, goes to his right, finds his man, scores a touchdown, and Ferrari would tie the game up with Voodoo 6-6. Six six. But there is a reason why Voodoo are who they are. And look here, if you give it to the man with the X on his back, he better be that guy. And that's exactly what he is as he gets into the end zone, and we have to make sure we recognize the great blocking that was going on. All right, Ferrari going to the left, trying to pass the ball, but it is a pick six. As the voodoo player runs down the sideline, throws up the peace sign like Tyreek, go ahead and walks into the end zone as voodoo would beat Ferrari in a very good game. Gen Elite taking on NCGE. Gen Elite going around the right side, makes one man miss, makes a couple of other people miss as he stays on his feet and gets down inside the five yard line. Then on the next play, Quarterback himself would take it, get into the end zone, and Jen Elite would have an early lead in this game. Jen Elite back on offense, trying to get something going. Gives it to their running back, but oh, hold on. If you keep looking, somebody done ran off with the bag as number 13 down the right, excuse me, down the left sideline, gets into the end zone, scores a touchdown, and NCGE would take the lead. Jen Elite still moving. Quarterback fakes it, goes around the left side, boot, naked, gets into the end zone, and Gen Elite would tie the game up. But late in the fourth quarter, can the quarterback out throw the coverage? And that's exactly what he does. NCGE would get into the end zone, and that would be the game-winning touchdown for them as they would win the game. NCG Elite versus Watkins. And opening up the game, Watkins into the end zone. See that big number 70 right there? That is a big person to run behind as they get into the end zone. And then, of course, we see Cam. I wonder what Cam said to him. Probably said, get the ball to the biggest, baddest thing on the field. As you see 22 <laughs> running through every single arm tackle that is there as NCG Elite gets onto the scoreboard, and the score would be 7-2-6. But Watkins... Great quarterback back there, finding his guy. This is just all effort right there. Receiver gets into the end zone, scores a touchdown. And we we got to work on the celebration a little bit, guys. We get chest bump. You got a chest bump. All right. Either way, Watkins, again, in the end zone, extending the lead over NCG Elite. And Watkins one more time. Quarterback goes back, finds an open man, scores a touchdown, and Watkins would beat NCG Elite. Charged up Bulls taking on the OG Ducks. Great game here as the Bulls quarterback goes up and finds his receiver. Great catch by the receiver. How about that? Yeah, well, you know when you do a play like that, you go ahead and get the dance do your thing in the end zone. All right, OG Ducks, quarterback. He had a great game. Reached down to his kneecap there and throw this thing. Receiver goes up and gets it. And again, I say when you make a catch like that, you got to hit the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a good celebration by him as he gets to the end zone. All right, number 25 runs through everybody. I mean the whole team. Coaches, water boys, and all scores a touchdown. All right, OG Ducks. If you were ever showing special teams only for one or two reasons, it's good for the one team or it's good for the other team. And this is a great play. Oh, goodness, getting a little bit hezzy there. 
as he gets down the right sideline, and he would be tackled inside the 10-yard line, but that is a good return by him. OG Ducks, fourth quarter, less than two minutes, looking to score. Quarterback rolls out to his left. Great play design by the coach there. Roll your quarterback left and to the left. Finds his man in the end zone, scores touchdown. And the score would be 14 to 20. Ducks needing a score. Less than 14 seconds left. Quarterback try to take it himself. The big D tackle gets the tackle, and time is running off the clock as OG Ducks wasn't able to get the playoff again. And charged up Bulls from Virginia would beat the OG Ducks from California in a great game as charged up Bulls win 20 to 14. Man, I told you, the highlights were off the chain. Halloween showcase, C1N. Look, nobody does it any better, man. But look, let's get to the next game. The game everybody wanted to see around the country. Brick City taking on SED Wolverines. They call them the party boys, man. Let's get to it. Brick City taking on Wolverines, a game that was very, very popular. Everybody wanted to see Brick City running back. Getting outside, getting into the end zone, great blocking downfield. I think they've been taught by their coach, Coach Ponce, how to block. You know they're going to be able to block. All right, quarterback going over to the left side, finding his receiver on a fade route. Nice Tony toe tap on the side there as he scores a touchdown. And Brick City would be up big in this game. But Wolverine showing some pride, fighting back right before halftime. Double zero, double wide, big body coming through. Breaks a couple of tackles, feet moving real, real fast. Gets into the end zone, and that would be one of the bright spots for the Wolverines as they would get on the scoreboard. But this game will be all about Brick City again. Look at the blocking downfield, but you need a playmaker to make a play. Great stiff arm, stays in bounds, gets into the end zone, and Brick City would win the game. Let's take a look at this week's rankings. At five and under, Municipal Raiders, ATL Elite, Xavier Elite, Georgia Falcons, and Bessemer. In the six and under division, RDU takes the top spot. At number five, Fort Lauderdale. At number nine, JL Patriots. And coming up at number 10, MBK. In seven and under, ATL Elite, SED Texas, at number five, at number six, Latonia, at number nine, NWO, and at number 10, Hemi Boys, in the eight and under. At number one, representing the great state of Alabama, Adamsville. At number three, Pompano. At number six, Space City. And at number 10, JL Patriots. In nine and under. See Bessemer at number two. So Icy at number three. At number eight, Lauderdale. And at number 10, Hulk Boys. In 10 and under. Voodoo. At number three, Dale Ray at number six, Saw Boys, and at number 10, Legacy U. In 11 and under, Georgia Eagles at number one, Miami Gardens at number four, Havoc at number nine, and AME at number 10. At 12 and under, Fort Lauderdale and Osceola. Two teams from Florida are number one and number two. At number four, Alpha Dogs. At number eight, 703. And at number 10, MP Blackhawks. At number one, saw the winner of that great game between the Ducks and Rare Breeze will be Rare Breeze at number one. At number three, Miami Gardens. At number eight, Trey Elite. And at number 10, Stonecrest Spartans. Coach, man, look, I am so excited to have you on. And for you guys that do not know, let me go ahead and give him his introduction here. A nationally known powerhouse, 
a nationally known, uh, we'll just say, uh, we won't say creator of players, but we'll say developer of players. How about that? And a great eye for talent. Uh, the name you guys know from coast to coast, the Rare Breeze, Coach DeMarcus. What's going on with you, man? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Yeah, man. Hey, look, look. You ain't got to tell me. I got one of the best intros in the business, coach. You can give it to me later. Uh, look, a big game coming up against the Ducks. I know you guys were excited. Your kids were excited. Uh, just tell me about the game in your opinion, kind of how it went. Uh, man, one of the best games of the year, man, by far. Uh, great national competition. Uh, the guy Keefe and OG Ducks, man, they always come with a good game plan and a good, good a good group of talent uh, to compete on a good stage. And uh, they put on an amazing show, man. Uh, came down to the end. All right, Coach, this is kind of like your second time around. And for those that don't really understand youth football, uh, you get a young group, you take them up, and you take them up as far as you can take them, right, 13U, and then they go ahead and move on to middle school, high school, whatever. This is your second group, right? And this group, I'm sure, is just as special as the first. But... I'm asking this to say, what makes this group so special? Because you have some really, really good players. Oh, um, man, I would say their ability to soak up the game from their big brothers, like that uh, that first group I had, man. Uh, them being able to watch them go through the process, and as well as me being able to learn from them going through the process and uh, pouring to everything that we learn from them. It makes it make this group just as dangerous, man, and special. All right, Coach, we ask this to everybody. You guys are considered right now one of the best, if not the best team out there. If there is a power ranking out there for youth football, do you feel you guys should be number one and why? Hands down, man. There's, no, there's really no debate to it. Uh, just the longevity, the, the resilience, and being able to play in – different weather, uh, different time zones, everywhere around the world, uh, gets different talent levels. Every coach they claim to be the top guru group. And man, they, they will stand it all, man. And, and and they stand tall here still today, man, as the best team in the world. Coach, man, thank you so much for coming on. Had a good time with you. And uh, let's, let's catch up and grab some wings or something, man. Wings on you, all right? How about that? <laughs> Top plays of the week, North Carolina Giants elite. Quarterback trying to find somebody. Spin around about three circles, and here's, here's what you do. Throw it to the biggest guy on the field. <laughs> That's what he does. He gets into the end zone, score a touchdown. North Carolina Giants will come up short, but they played well in the game. So icy. Out of Georgia. Look at the blocking downfield. Great way to block all that up. And after this, he just used pure speed. And I always say, man, look at the helmet to body ratio. That is pretty funny, but good play by him. All right. Charged up Bulls out of Virginia. Quarterback runs through everybody. Water boy, cheerleaders, head coach, assistant coach. Everybody scores a touchdown. Here, OG Ducks. Going to the right side. Receiver climbs the ladder. Look here. When you do all of this. You can go ahead and do whatever you want to do in the end zone. Okay, I see the dance and a lot of wiggle going on. All right, good play by him. All right, OG Ducks versus Rare Breeze. Best game of the day. Check out the Rare Breeze returner. Makes one man miss, hops over another one, and after that, it's just pure speed. That guy's name is Ja'Cory Shockley, one of the best players in the country. He has a bright future ahead of him. Brick City. Coach Pouncey, just the way he draws it up. Tony Toe Tap in the corner of the end zone there. Scores touchdown. Brick City would win this game against the Wolverines out of Texas, a game that a lot of people wanted to see. And generally, trying to get something going. The ball is ripped out of his hands. And look at number 13. You know he's been telling his mama he's going to do this all week. He got the special shoes on and everything. Gets into the end zone. And NCGE would win the game. Voodoo. Great cover by the secondary. I wonder who they're coached by. They're coached by my Carroll, but could a my Carroll do this with the pick six down the right sideline? They call him LA Mike for a reason. Throws up the peace sign like Tyree. 
and he would walk into the end zone, like really walk into the end zone. But top play of the week, whenever one of your big guys do this, you gotta show him a little bit of love. Double zero, big body. Stiff arm, keeps his feet, keeps his feet, and look at the feet, big body feet moving fast, gets into the end zone, and that is your top play of the week. As the, as the Wolverines would play hard, but they would come up short. Congrats to Artez Moton for being named the C1N Player of the Week from the Brick City Boys tenure. Congratulations to you, homie. Guys, as always, man, we appreciate you rocking with us. Don't forget December the 2nd through December the 8th, the Bless the Babies Bowl in Cocoa Beach, Florida. And make sure you tune in every week to YouTube as we have a new episode every week, every week guys. The best highlights, the best coaches interviews, the rankings, everything you guys want to see to keep you updated with you sports. Till next time, see you later.